This time we're going to be looking at code splitting, but before we do anything, let's have a quick look at our rollup config file. And when we look at this, we can say straight away, this is a perfect candidate for a bit of refactoring. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new directory called dot build. And inside this directory, I'm going to create a new file called rollup.js. Now we're going to grab all of this with the imports and put that in our new file. Next, uh, we need to export two things. So we're going to do export const is dev and our function. So this is taken care of. Another one export const files. This one we are going to be passing a path. All right, so, and now what we can do, we can just return, turn our array of files. Once this is out of the way, we go back to our rollup.config, we're gonna import. Is dev and files, we're gonna import this from build rollup. Now, our isDev helper function will work straight away. Um, now, in terms of the files, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to pass our path src slash ts. And now, if we just test that, npm run build, we should see exact same behavior as before. So now we can focus on code splitting. We are pretty much uh, where we left last time. And we can see we are exporting array of our um, objects. Uh, and every object has a single input file. Now, if I'm just going to do this, uh, just to visualize this better. Uh, so we've got something like this. And there is an input. And we have something like src slash ts slash app dot ts. Now, because we pass in separate object configurations for every input file, what rollup will do, it will attempt to bundle this as a flat bundles, meaning that every single input file is treated as a self-contained bundle. Now, if we want to trigger code splitting, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to pass array of files to an input. So we will have to do something like this. And then what's going to happen, rollup will be seeing that we've got multiple entry files, but they're not going to be treated anymore as a flat bundles. So what's going to happen if rollup see any code that is being reused, it will try to extract this code and put that into a chunk. So let's rewrite our config and then we're going to be able to clearly see uh, what's going to happen when we trigger a code splitting. So in that case, what we need to do, we're going to have to do something like this. And now we're going to do export default and we are going to export and still do an array. We're going to pass our configuration object, but this time what we can do, instead of passing single input file, we're going to pass an array of inputs. And because we've got our helper function files, what we can do, we can just spread the array which comes from that function. Now, this is already much better and this is going to help us uh, a lot managing uh, our files. So if, for example, I wanted to add uh, another folder uh, being included, so let's, for example, move our pages into new folder called pages and let me just move them into that folder. Like so, move and Let's update this and uh, let's update this. 
that should be fine that should be fine great right so if we do that what we can do we can pass more directories like so so we can do src slash ds slash pages and this is pretty much it and now if we run this we're gonna see what rollup attempts to do so once this is compiled we're gonna see in our distribution folder that we've got this chunk and what that is this is module which was reused in multiple files and because it was reused rollup will put that into file called chunk so we can see on the end we've got some sort of hash to distinguish that file but if we look at our imports we're going to see that also rollup would replace that in the imports so everything is taken care of and we don't have to worry too much about it so another example of triggering the code splitting would be the use case of dynamic imports so let's try to do that uh, so let's create a new module uh, and let's call this dog and let's export default class dog and let's create public uh, function block let's just console.log woof woof good enough and now if we try to import this module dynamically and we can do that if we create an ify like so let's mark this async um, so we can say const module equals await import and we're gonna import our dog module so what we can say uh, modules and we're gonna import dog now we're gonna get text script error here and it says we can only use dynamic imports when we use a certain type of module and this is happening because we remove the type of the module in our ts config so let's add this back and still let's stay with es6 modules es next es next like so so now if you go back in here everything should be fine and we've got another one it's complaining about missing semicolon so now we imported that so then what we can say then module and we're going to return module dot default after that we can create instance of our dog so we're going to say cons dog equals new module like so and then we can call our method call bark now if we try to compile this again you're gonna see even though we only use our dog module once rollup will put our module into a chunk and the reason for that is if you try to do dynamic import in the browser it only makes sense that this is being put it as a chunk so consider this situation we've got complex ui and what we can do we can defer our modules and we can fetch them based on the certain action so let's say we've got the click button we click something uh, we've got certain logic on javascript which doesn't need to be loaded until we perform this action so after clicking the button we're going to be able to dynamically resolve this import let's review our npm run dev script so if i'm gonna run this npm run dev uh, we're gonna see interesting behavior and see that in a moment pretty good now we can see that every time the chunk is generated it's gonna have a different hash so if for example i change the dog to bark twice and i save that we're gonna see we've got a new chunk with a different hash and now we're going to keep doing that and in development there is really no easy way to remove that so what we do for our build task before we actually build we use in rimraf to clear our distribution folder and then we compile
So it would be nice if we could clear our distribution folder every time we run rollup, uh, both on build and watch. And we can do that with uh, help of additional plugin. So I'm going to add this as dependency, npmi, dash dash save dev. And we want to install rollup plugin clear. Now going back to our rollup config, we're going to have to import our plugin. So let's say import clear from rollup plugin clear. And we're going to have to add it to our array of plugins. We can do that with saying clear. And as always, we're going to have to pass configuration object. And we've got two options here. One is called targets. Uh, this defines uh, which uh, directories that need, uh, needs to be emptied. So we're going to say public slash JS. And other option is watch. So we say in here that we want to clear our distribution folder also when we run rollup in the watch mode. So we're going to say true. Now, if I try to run my dev task again, we're going to see that our distribution folder is cleared and all the assets recompiled. And if I'm going to go and change our dog again, to say, well, bark less, then we're going to see we're not getting any extra chunks anymore. So this is working great. Let's just have a quick look uh, if this is still working with our browser sync. We've got browser sync running in the background, so let's pull that over and let's bring our editor next to our window. So let's open console and this is the problem. We don't see uh, our app.js being loaded and we're going to get to the bottom of that. Why is this happening? So if I go and change the dog again and say, oh, well, bark some more. We're going to see the browser sync doesn't trigger the browser reload. And this is because browser sync by default only watches files change. Luckily for us, we can pass some additional options to trigger different events for browser reload. I'm going to pass additional CLI flag called watch events. And like I said, by default, browser sync only will detect changes on files uh, if the file itself changed. But if we remove the file, the browser reload won't be triggered. So what we need to do in that case, we need to pass additional events. And the events we want are add and add the. So anytime we change the file or we add a new file or add the directory, reload the browser. So if we test this now, npm run dev, we should get our browser sync to cooperate. So if I check my console, I can see all the console logs are coming through. And if I just go and update the dog again, and let's say bark even more, we should see that the browser reload is working and we are getting our console logs. Now looking at our package.json, we can see that our browser sync command is getting quite long and we can very easily clear this up with browser sync configuration file. So what we can do, we can say npx browser sync init and this will initialize the browser sync config. So now instead of passing everything as the CLI flags, we should be able to configure everything from our configuration file. We want to match the same configuration as we did in our package.json running browser sync from command line. We're going to have to change a few things. Uh, first is files and we want to say yes, keep watching files and we're going to say that we want to watch all the files in the public folder and we're going to say watch all the files in all subdirectories in public directory. So this looks good. We need to add our watch events. So we're going to say add and another one is add 
there. Uh, next, uh, we want to set our watcher to true, like so. Uh, we need to enable server. So we're going to say that we're going to be serving from our public directory. Uh, we're going to adjust the port to 5000, like we had it before. And this is pretty much it. If we go back to our package.json, instead of running everything with the command line arguments, we can say brow, um, browser sync start, and we can pass our config, which is BS config.js. So now if we run our npm run dev, everything should works exactly the same as before. But now everything should be a little bit cleaner in our package.json. So let's uh, just make another test and let's just make our dog bark less. And yes, it's working beautifully. If this video helped you in any way, please remember to smash that like button or even subscribe. As always, I will include the link to the GitHub repository in the description. Thank you for watching.